The world of Skyrim is robust, but a great deal of lore lurks beneath the surface of this tale of Stormcloak Rebellion and the rise of the last Dragonborn. We're shining a light on a few of those messed up things in Skyrim nobody talks about. Skyrim is a land steeped in the traditions of the Nords, a tall and fair-haired people who are famous for their resistance to cold and their talent as warriors. The ancient tombs of their deceased are scattered across the continent and regularly serve as points of interest in the player's open-ended race against the dragon Alduin. These barrows, unified in form and function, are full of undead monstrosities, legions of traps, and lots of treasure. That makes the Dragonborn essentially a glorified grave robber throughout the course of the game's epic narrative. This famous phrase, that belongs in a museum. Doesn't apply to the Doverkeen, who begins rifling through the urns and ashes of the dead as early as the Bleak Falls Barrow main quest. Faringa secret fire challenges the last dragonborn to explore Bleak Falls Barrow and retrieve the Dragonstone. Along the way, you can plunder this ancient burial mound to your heart's content. Similar Draugr barrows and other subterranean tombs are scattered liberally throughout Skyrim's enormous map, and part of the game's appeal lies in finding and exploring them. But rarely, if ever, does it discourage you from crawling through them for well wealth and wealth alone. Face it, the Dragonborn is a Tomb Raider. Believe it or not, you can actually sell the merchants of Skyrim their inventory from their very own shelves. And no matter how you slice it, duping the locals like this just feels a little wrong. Whether or not you can pull this obliquely devious trick for fast profits depends on how friendly any given merchant NPC is to your character, a gameplay element guided by Skyrim's disposition mechanic. Some merchants, like Alvor of Riverwood, will most likely be friendly to you when you very first meet them. Others will have to be swayed by your silver tongue or the merits of your deeds. What's funny is that these friendly vendors will let you loot the items on their own shelves before buying them back from you. And if you're not friendly enough with a merchant from completing a side quest or other such favor, you can look to the investor perk to kickstart your profitable relationship. This expert level perk under the speech constellation is a gift that keeps on giving, especially if you're trying to roleplay a more socially proficient dragonborn who likes to spend more time amongst civilization and less time looting the musty, crusty crypts and caves of Skyrim's outskirts. As much as they offer us beautifully realized fantasy sandboxes to explore, Bethesda Game Studios makes games that actually reflect the world we live in. In July 2018, director Todd Howard told Gama Sutra, The tone of Skyrim involves a more rugged world, a more lived-in world, where magic is more low fantasy. There is more violence in it. Not for gore's sake, there's not a ton of gore in the game, but it just seems like it would be a more violent place. And as we well know, the real-life violence taking place right here on Earth is usually perpetrated by our fellow man. It's not so different in Skyrim, where otherwise like-minded elves and humans have harbored hostility against each other for centuries. The Nords of Skyrim are a provincial people, and the Dunmer of Windhelm bear the brunt of this misguided and often violent aggression. Not only are the Dark Elves confined to the city's ghettos, they're met with constant disdain by the local bigots. Every night, I walk around a grey quarter and let them greyskins know what I think of them. Sadly, Skyrim's racism is inescapable, and there's nothing even the likes of the Dragonborn can do about it. You like living in this filthy slum, Dark Elves? Maybe you should go back to Morrowind where you belong! The souls of the dead used as ammunition? Sad, but true. One of the most messed up things going on in Skyrim isn't a dragon epidemic or the rash of stolen sweet rolls. It's how people from all walks of life trade the souls of deceased creatures and NPCs, stored in tiny stones. It's like Pokemon, but somehow way more messed up. Soul Trap is an apprentice-level conjuration spell that harnesses the living essence of slain creatures and people to store power in soul gems, which are used to create and recharge magical arms, armor, and other arcane curiosities. This form of magic is so commonplace that most vendors offer soul gems of various sizes for trade. These arcane crystals can often decorate the homes and lairs of Skyrim's most magically inclined too. The history and origin of this creepy occult practice is not fully understood, but scholars have identified the basics. According to the in-game book, Souls Black and White, the nature of the soul is not knowable. Every wizard that has attempted it vanishes without a trace. What can be known is that souls are a source of mystic energy that can be harvested. Good luck sleeping at night knowing you've been harvesting the souls of the dead to power your damn wabberjack. If that doesn't make you feel guilty enough, you're taking work away from the legit Grim Reaper. Boy, this, uh, this doesn't leave much to the imagination, does it?
While the weaponry in Vanilla Skyrim is pretty straightforward, additional content like Dawnguard and Dragonborn began to infuse the game with decidedly stranger arms and armor for the fight against Alduin. The Dragonborn DLC, in particular, takes players to the far shores of Soulslime, where the strange plants and animals of Morrowind have taken root, and explores some of the craziest narratives the game has to offer. It's here in White Ridge Barrow that you'll find one of Skyrim's most bizarre weapon sets, the Spider Scrolls, an assortment of enchanted weaponized arachnids held in the palm of your hands. Contrary to Skyrim's frostbite spiders, the albino spiders of Soulsteam are smaller arachnids that populate areas including Fort Frostmoth, High Point Tower, Colbyorn Barrow, and the aforementioned White Ridge Barrow. The spider experiment notes of the deceased Servos Rendars and his sister Merla reveal that Soulsteam's albino spiders can actually harness magical effects via mechanics similar to an Atronach Forge. The crazy part? You actually wield the spiders using your scroll slots and toss them like grenades to deliver various magical effects. The Stormcloak Rebellion isn't the only socio-political upheaval rocking Skyrim to its core. It seems that people of Markarth and the Reach have their own sordid story to tell, and some would rather let it go unspoken. If you've spent any time on the western edge of Skyrim's frontier, you've likely encountered the Forsworn, a relentless, savage-seeming people who wield primitive weapons and primordial magics with cunning and rage. The Forsworn conspiracy side quest exposes the bloody and brutal truth behind the history of these displaced people, and it's not pretty. The Forsworn are a clan of natives that can be encountered in the Reach who were driven from their homeland during the Nord occupation of Markarth. They regard the southwesternmost hold of Skyrim as their ancestral homeland, and reject the Nord's occupation of the region as well as any legal authority the Empire has over it. The Forsworn briefly occupied Markarth until the Stormcloaks were enlisted by the Empire to retake the city, resulting in the death of many Forsworn during the battle to reclaim the walled Dwarven city. Since then, they've become boogeymen too and often scapegoats for for the so-called civilized people who remain in their stead. A story of the Fulmer is yet another woeful tale in the history of Skyrim's troubled past, and it's pretty messed up. As it happens, Skyrim's long extinct Snow Elves were blinded and imprisoned by the very hosts who gave them sanctuary as they fled their Nord aggressors. The twisted subterranean creatures known as Fulmer are the result of this cruel and deceitful act, and serve as an enduring reminder of the saga's existential overtones and themes of karmic justice. Prior to this revelation, the Fulmer can be seen as little more than monsters who hunt the depths of Skyrim's cavernous underground with keen ears and cruel hearts. But like many good tales in Tamriel, their story takes a bit of puzzle solving to bring to life. The events of this struggle are relayed in the epic poem The Betrayed, which is a book that can be found as part of the ancient Fulmer tome, side quest. Torn from their home of ice and frost, thrown into the pitch black dread of night, living in fear as their mind becomes lost, as their eyes began dimming the light. It further explains a snow elf's subjugation at the hands of the ruthless dwarves. Chained and enslaved, what once was light turned to blackness, alone and betrayed, sinking deeper into madness. One of Skyrim's most popular adventures is the raucous Daedric quest, A Night to Remember, which pays tribute to the popular comedy The Hangover. But one detail players often forget is that this fabled mission of drunken romance actually managed to put our hero in one of the more detestable situations of his or her storied career. In case you missed it, the Dragonborn almost shacked up with a Hagraven. The night in question begins with a conversation at the Bannered Mare in Whiterun, where once you've reached level 14, a stranger named Sam Gwaven challenges you to an innocent drinking contest. What could go wrong? You look like someone who can hold their liquor. How about a friendly contest to win a staff? As luck would have it, this is all a plot by Sanguine, the Daedric Prince of Debauchery, who leads you on a wild, booze-filled ride from one hold to another over the course of an evening you most certainly forgot. As the Dragonborn pieces together the missing moments of this alcohol-fueled escapade, you'll come to the startling realization that the Dovahkiin almost hooked up with Moira the Hagraven, your fiancé who's been waiting for you. Darling, I've been waiting for you to return to consummate our love. Which begs the question, what do you call a shotgun wedding in Skyrim? The tendrils of Daedric corruption run far and wide through the nine holds of Skyrim, but occasionally one story of villainy stands out from the rest because of what we don't know. Strange things are afoot in the White Run village of Rorikstead, where an old sorcerer trains a young magic user to carry on the dark and primordial traditions of a Daedric prince. I was just wondering, the next time we meet, do you think maybe you could teach me some fire magic? Nothing dangerous, maybe a candle lighting spell? 
The riddle of Rorik Stead's detestable legacy is a hard one to find, let alone decipher. But a few elements in particular can help players start to piece this puzzle together. First, it's important to note Rorik Stead's tangential relationship to the Daedric laden quests A Night to Remember and Eric the Slayer. But a few other clues are particularly damning. A book titled Spirit of the Daedra, The Presence of Soul Gems, Rumors of Dead Mothers and Fertile Land, and, most importantly, a curious old Breton named Joanne Manet. Why is he so suspicious? Well, well, only because he schools a young girl named Sissel in the ways of dark magic, elements which seem to suggest a tradition of ritualistic sacrifice in exchange for a bountiful harvest. Well, that's neat. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.